Good morning, everyone. So today's class um, is for the lower back. Uh, and today I'm going to honor um, one of Gabby's nannies that became quite a good friend as well as a nanny. And who basically told me what I'm going to teach you today or a lot of what I'm going to teach you today. So a lot of the lower back pain comes from the fact that we normally crouch when we are kind of writing on, on our bed. And it normally looks like this, but it can be more severe, like this, or like in this, like this. So that constant pressure into the spine, that constant pressure into kind of the lower part of, of your spine, is over time starts to, to create problems. So one of the things, and especially when you have a little baby, like like in the case of Gabby, when I was being a, you were a baby. I I'm a toddler dog. Yes, you're a toddler dog. So when Gabby was a baby, um, and they used to carry her, that that also brought quite a lot of troubles into into the spine. So one of the things she used to tell me is kind of the way they carry kids in in Ethiopia uh, and in Eritrea, where she's from. And then it's all about hugging the center. So she, what she did, and what she didn't really understood back then is that she used to wrap me with fabrics all around and wrap me toward the center and say, try to keep your chest hugging toward the center. And as I hugged toward the center, when I was meant to kind of carry Gabby, she used to say, well, as you hug towards the center, then open the chest is that. So show the chest to the front, but hug. The first motion that we're going to learn today is that if we're going to learn today is a hugging motion. So hug. Imagine you're hugging towards the center of your body. Imagine kind of here is your diaphragm. So you just, just kind of underneath or in between your ribs in the space where the ribs are created. So hug towards the center. Hug towards the rib. And now hug towards the back. Hug towards the ribs. The motion is going to be so small that you cannot really see it. Hug towards the back. Hug towards the ribs. Hug towards the back. Bring the two shoulder blades together. Hug towards the ribs. Hug towards the back. Hug towards the ribs. Hug towards the back. Hug towards the ribs. Hug towards the back. Hug towards the ribs. And half towards the back. Now bring your hands into your knee. You're gonna press, and even if your shoulders come up, it doesn't matter. Really press forward, and then start walking your hands a little bit closer until the point where you kind of go further. And this is one of the poses that I really love the most when I wake up and I feel we have no space. This motion of just really pushing down into the ground just lifts me up. Just try it, release, hug towards the center, and then push. Shame towards the chest. Release, hug towards the center, push, shame towards the chest. Now let's do all these with a pranayama, with a breath. So on the inhale, hug towards the center. Push, hold, bring the chin into the chest, hold your breath for five, four, three, two, one. Breathe slowly, release. Inhale, hug. Exhale, uh, hold, push. And release. Last time, inhale, up. Hold and push. And exhale, release. Bring your right hand towards your left knee and use very tiny twists. Don't go all the way. Move your hand towards the back. So move your left hand towards the back. Then bring the lip, bring the twist a little bit kind of wider. 
So move the hand, move the hand, move the hand. Don't allow the knees to, to kind of go up too much. And then just open the chest, show the chest to the front, hug, hug into the center of the body. And this really feels awesome for me. I don't know for you, but it feels good, Debbie. Yeah. Nice. And then go back to the front, twist to the other side, get a little bit of a twist only at the beginning. And then now walk your hand, move your right hand back, back, back as much as you can until you feel that your knees start to lift. And then from there, show the chest to the front. Imagine your jaw and chest all the way into the ceiling and hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. So today what we're going to do is we're going to mix Jin Yang Yoga. And I have lots of uh, credits to give for this class. This class I learned it initially from Matthew Bouvreau and uh, I did a class with him on lower back. And then I did a class with Chris Chavez, which I will have the, the links, and he complemented from the jam uh, section. And I kind of incorporated things that I found in other classes from Megan Trainer and kind of lots of other teachers and Megan Curry that I really liked. So uh, this comes from the Jean tradition. And it's interesting because it's normally not the first pose that you do in the morning, or it's not the first pose that you do in a class, but somehow in the morning it really makes sense. So I'm going to ask you to bring your legs into a, a diamond shape. Your legs are quite set apart from, from your pelvis, about three hands distance. Then on the inhale, you're going to lift, show your chest, hug your ribs, on the exhale, move lower as much as you can. If you're really flexible like that, you go a little bit low, but then try to always think about lengthening first. Try to lengthen as much. Make sure your legs are quite away from you. You can bring your hands or your arms around your legs underneath. And release. Your head down. In the morning, it's very likely that you're going to have not all the space that you normally have during the day. So if you don't go low, as low as you normally do, just let it go. In gene, it's more about allowing the body to find its own space to use gravity to do. Try to go a little bit deeper. And a little bit deeper. And a little bit deeper. We're going to stay here for about a minute. So just release that whatever you are. If you're really flexible like Gabby, bring the arms on the outside. Try to bring your elbows down. Maybe your forehead goes into your legs. Try to separate them a little more. Maybe your forehead goes behind the feet. Into the floor. Then just think more about the lengthening process into the lower back. Then the hip motion on opening. Yeah. Stay down. Four. For another 20 seconds. Use your breath to find a space. On the inhale, find the spaces where you find lack of, of space or where you feel you don't have the motion to move on. On the exhale, release that tension from inside. Inhale, slowly lift. Move your hands to the back. Open the chest. 
Exhale, extend the legs into Paschimottanasana. Bend the knees and allow the feet to kind of open a little bit to the side, just a little bit. We're going to move into modified versions of the Paschimottanasana of the forward bend. So move forward. If you can raise your feet, remember, bend the knees. Move forward and bend the knee and grab them. And then just release the hands on either side of your legs, wherever they are. Yeah. Then as you start to find space, we're going to stay here only for a minute and a half. As you start finding space, you start extending the legs. But just release the hands, don't use the hands. Allow this to be a passive moment. Try to find a space where the elbows can stay down. If the elbows can stay down, you can use a block. Try to make these as easy and relaxing on the body. So the body doesn't have to kind of fight inside in your mind to keep the pose. Use blocks, use pillows, use books. Now bring that sensation or that motion of hugging into the center and see what happens when you hug towards the center. For me, I tend to find a little bit more of the space. Next, inhale, look forward, really slowly, come all the way to the back, bring your hands towards the back, fingers facing forward, bend the knees, bring the knees halfway through, inhale, lift your hips, stable top, look up. Hold it for about 10 breaths, Try to really use the power of your legs, your hamstrings to keep you lifted. We normally rely a lot on the strength of the back. Use the legs, use your buttocks. On the exhale, slowly move the buttocks all the way back and down. And we're going to start moving forward. So the first pose, the first actual asana today uh, kind of the standing asana is going to be malasana. And it, malasana is really hard in the morning for me. I really have lots of knee issues. So if you cannot find malasana, or for example, like me, you're very high, stay into your high malasana, or bring the block on your knee and find your malasana here. That'd be a pillow, a blanket, or anything. And what you're going to do is you're just going to release forward. Your hands facing up. The same thing as we did on Fashion Motanasana. We're going to release forward. And as you feel that the knees get space, you're going to remove the block from underneath. And make it a little bit more active. So you're going to have a hugging sensation towards the center. Release your forehead down. Once again, we're going to stay here for about 30 seconds. Stay down. My last one is one of the best poses for lower back pain. So just breathe into the pose. Allow the space to come slowly into the pose. Another 10 breath here. Uh, 
from your next inhale, start to lift without using hands. Go halfway, make sure your feet are facing forward. We're going to go for the first Uttanasana. Keep the knees bent as much as you need so the hands can stay down, the arms can stay down. Hands facing up. And slowly start to make your way up. Make your way up. Make your way up. The last thing that goes up is the head. Open, engage the core towards the center. Hug as we did at the beginning. Hug towards the center. On the inhale, bring your arms up. Roll them towards the back. Interlace your fingers behind your head. Open the chest. Engage your glutes as you open the chest forward. Exhale, bring the elbows forward. Bring the elbows together. Move all the way down like you were. Have a little bit of a, um, how do you say kind of in English, Jody? Snail. A snail. That's what I have to say. Try to wear a snail. We're going to continue with this motion. So bend the knees, create buoyancy into the legs. Open the stand tall. Open your arms. Oh. Exhale, bring the elbows. Move forward. Bend the knees. Bring your arms towards your knees. And same thing. Inhale, extend, open. Exhale, bend the knees, bring the elbows together, move forward. Inhale one more time, open. Exhale, bring the elbows together, bend the knees, move down. Last time, inhale, create buoyancy of the legs, use the legs. Thank you. Exhale, go all the way down. And forward. Beautiful. So as you are down with your elbows towards your knees, start to extend the legs. And we're going to start little, little motions of moving back and forth. So you just move back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, creating a space into the back of the legs. Just back and forth. Now bend your right knee, move the elbows toward the left, bend the left knee, bring the elbows towards the front. Then just keep the coordination with this motion. Imagine you're in a swing. Last time, release your hands down. If you don't have a space on the legs, I'm going to advise you to use a block. So I'm going to ask Gabby to use a block today. She can get some length into her hamstrings. So move down and allow the hands to be down and we're going to start the sequence today. So the sequence today is going to be only two ones, right? So on the next inhale, look forward. Bring your right knee towards the chest, extend the leg towards the back, and really slowly start moving it there. Oh, this is too weighty. 
So one side and then kind of two different ways of doing so. Okay, bring the knee down. Start moving back and forth. Find any space into your hips. Slowly, inhale, come up into your low lunge. Cap the asana, bring interlace your fingers, bring the fingers or bring the hands on top of the knee and move forward. Finding a space into the psoas. A little bit collapsing the back, but try to engage the ribs. And this is where like the motion of hugging the ribs is going to help us. Whenever we're finding a back bend, try to find a little bit of that sensation of activation into your lower back. So activate toward the center. Keep moving forward. Keep feeling that the psoas is, is stretching the front part of your right leg. On the exhale, come high. Make sure your legs are doing a square or, a 90, or in a 90 degree angle. Keep the hands into your knee, the interlace hands into your knee. And we're going to start that same motion of hugging towards the center and opening. Hugging towards the center and opening. And then as you hug towards the center, what I want you to feel is that your knee is really pulling down. It's like crashing into the ground, really making a hole. Create a space into the front part of your right leg. Stay here for five, four, three, two, and one. Release with the hands interlaced, just cross them and put them into your back, open the chest. On the exhale, bring the hands up, tuck your toes, and prepare to go up. Inhale, exhale, move up. Find your high lunge, your Anjaniyasana. Breathe into the Anjaniyasana, and same thing. We're going to bring your hands, interlace your hands behind your head, and we're going to bring that motion of hugging, and then opening, and then hugging, and then opening, and then hugging, and then opening, hugging, opening, hugging, opening. Last time, hugging, opening. Inhale, bring your hands up. On the exhale, you're going to bring your right hand forward, left hand to the back, into a twist. Use your lower back to keep you strong and high. So hug into the ribs and find a little bit of pull-up sensation. Exhale slowly, release your right hand down, bring your left hand up into an easy twist. Once again, hug the ribs and try to move a little bit more towards the inside. Move a little bit more into the twist. On the exhale, you circle your hands around, bring your hands around, finding your warrior two. Right with your hands like that, remember? Oh, yeah. Right with your hands. Beautiful. <laughs> Find your warrior two, be of the rest and obey. Look forward, look to the back. Same thing, hug the ribs towards the center. Find length. On the exhale, release your right hand to the back. Open the chest, peaceful warrior. Viparita Viravadrasana. I'm trying to find a kitty cat. On the exhale, move forward, bring your elbow into your knee, or better if you bring your elbow 
a little bit forward on the kind of inside of your knee. Roll your hand, your, your uh, right arm forward, open the chest, and find the space here in here. Get really long, hug the ribs once again, into Padukanasana, into Padukanasana, repeat the Padukanasana. Exhale, roll your arm in front of your face here, go your arm, extend both legs, repeat the Padukanasana, arms up, interlace the fingers, bring them behind your head, open the chest, back, engage your glutes, engage your legs, open the chest toward the center, and up, exhale, bring the elbows together, move your heels towards the outside, bring everything in. We're going to do it that once again. Inhale, bend the knees, lift, bring the heels in, open, Exhale, as you move forward, you bring the heel, uh, um, heels outward and bring the elbows in. Last time, inhale, heels in, open, extend the legs. Exhale, move down, heels up. Bring your hands into your knees, be careful with your neighbor. Inhale, lift. We're going to find horse stance. So I'm going to look towards the camera so you can see it. So into horse stance, we're going to do a really nice pose that you could do, for example, if you're writing in your desk and you need a little bit of space into your lower back. So you're going to bring your right elbow towards the center. Move your chest towards the left knee. Inhale, lift. Opposite. Inhale, lift, exhale. Inhale, lift, center. Inhale, lift, right shoulder in. Inhale, lift, left shoulder in. Last time, each side, in again. Right shoulder in. Inhale, lift, left. Inhale, lift everything, bring interlace your hands behind, extend the legs once again, open. On the exhale, bring the heels outward and move them. Once again, we're going to allow gravity to start doing a little bit of the job. So if you're kind of somebody who normally tries to practice Pedopanasana by bringing the head down, Today, it doesn't really matter. Just focus on allowing gravity to do the job. Deep breaths, in and out. To bring the legs together. Release your hands down. Bring your right hand into the center. Left hand opens. Once again, an easy twist. Change left hand to the center and twist to the other side. Again, use the ribs, hug the ribs toward the center to find the space. Release your hands down, move all the way towards the front of the mat. And start finding a little bit of space. Move your foot, your left foot, a little bit wider. Um, yeah, a little bit wider and find a little bit of space here. Move side to side, make circles. 
Same thing as we did beginning. We're going to hop, lift, find kind of that buoyancy into your legs by hugging the rib and exhale, unhug them. Hug the ribs towards the center, release them. Hug the ribs and release them. One more time, hug the ribs, release them. Beautiful. Bring your knee down. If you have it in your practice, go a little bit low into your, into your lizard. Find a little bit of space. Again, try to keep the ribs hugging towards the center. So you protect your lower back here. And all the sensation and all the movement and all the depth comes from the hips. The next inhale, extend the back leg, and if you can, go from here right away into your elbow plank. If it's too much for you, your elbow plank, you bring the knees down. It doesn't really matter that much, okay? What we're going to do is the same thing. If you have your elbows down, you're going to hop the ribs, bring everything towards the center, exhale, release without of you exploring your lower back too much and your buttocks up. Inhale, hug, exhale, slightly tense, it's like kind of release. Inhale, hug, exhale, slight release. Inhale, hug, exhale, slight release. Inhale, hug, exhale, slight release. Deep breath. So now we're going to stay here and we're going to start moving the hips side to side. So move your right hip to the side, left hip down. Right hip to the side, left hip down. Right hip to the side, left hip down. Right hip to the side, left hip to the side. Two more, each side. One more. And slowly start to walk your feet forward into your dolphin pose. Breathe here. Try to push your elbows back, your chest back. One more breath and extend the arms. Beautiful, everyone. Now we're facing them. We're going to repeat the same thing on the left side. Ready? So, inhale, bring your right foot up, the knee to the center, release the foot in between your hands, and prepare for your crescent. So, first thing, bring your knee down, same thing as we did before, hop towards the center, then slide release, hop towards the center, release, last time, hop towards the center, release. Interlace your fingers. This time, try to do it in a non-dominant way. Bring the fingers into, um, into your knee. And same thing. Hop towards the center and release. Hop towards the center and then release. Hop towards the center and then release. Hop towards the center and then release. Last time, hop towards the center. Now, as we come towards the center, bring your feet into a 90 90 degree angle. That yeah, you're perfect. Then you just stay here. Feel as if your knee was really pulling a hole or making a hole all the way down into the ground. And extend, kind of find an extension into your left, right, into your left side. Keep the interlace, bring the hands up, bring the interlace behind your head, open the chest as you move forward, and then keep hugging the ribs. So the kind of all the space is found from the lengthening of the front body, but you can keep 
or do you feel some engagement into the lower back? Open the chest up into the ceiling. Beautiful. On the exhale, keep the arms as they are or bring them all the way up. Tuck your back toes. Inhale, lift into your crescent lunge. So we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to open, we're going to close. We're going to open, we're going to close. We're going to open, we're going to hop towards the center. Open, 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 hop towards the center. Bring your arms forward. Your right arm is going to go to the back. Left hand stays to the front. Open into your twist. Use the legs and your lower back to hop towards the center. And as you hop all the body towards the center, you find the space into your twist. Hold here for three, for two, and one. Circle your arms around. Find your warrior two. Get long, look at both your arms. Once again, hug the ribs towards the center. On the, on the next exhale, move back. Peaceful warrior, Viparita Vilasana. That is making fun of the pose of the Sanskrit A. Viparita. Like it. it sounds cool. Yeah. Beautiful. Get a little space here. As you move forward, you're going to bring your elbow on top of your knee or on the outside. Yeah. So you use a little bit more of your legs. This is really going to ask you to use the legs. Hold the ribs towards the center. Circle your arm forward in front of your face. Look. Add your fingers or look down. Stay here for five, four, three, two, one. Extend the leg. Find some release into the legs. Have a rest if you need to. Look at the side wall. Inhale, bring your arms up. Interlace the fingers. Hands behind your head. Open. Bring your toes in. Heels up. On the exhale, move forward. Heels in, toes out. Find buoyancy. Find buoyancy into your legs. Open. Use the glutes. Engage the lower back. Engage everything towards kind of the center of your back. On the exhale, hop everything towards the center. <laughs> Inhale, open. Exhale, forward. Two more. Inhale, open. Exhale, forward. Inhale, open. And exhale, forward. Stay down. You can keep the knees bent or extend and start finding a space into your legs by moving kind of up and down, like you were a little bit of the zoom. Swing. You can move the swing side to side like a pendulum as well. But the back and forth motion, I find it really releasing for my lower back. Use breath. Really advanced breath. Fisher can smile. 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 Release your left hand into the center of your mat. Twist towards the front of the mat. The other side, monkey. Oh, well, yeah, because you're. 
This time, if you can, walk your left hand into your heel, into your ankle, and then open from there. Get kind of this, this opening and this twist a little bit deeper. From here, you can stay there or walk your hand, move your right hand towards the center and forward. Mm -hmm. Grab the ankle, then circle your arm around, bring it towards the front. I don't have a balance. Then twist with it, bring your knees a little bit closer. Find the space now. Try to bring move, move your chest towards the side. Show with the chest in between your arms. Again, really advanced breath picture. Just kind of smile. Release. Return to the center. Other side. So first thing, right hand down, left arm open to stay here, or bring your right hand around your left ankle, open into a twist. Maybe you can release your left hand forward towards the side of the mat. Then look at the space in between your hands, push your chest in between. Beautiful. And smile. And smile. smile. Exhale, release everything, move all the way towards the front. Same thing as we did on the other side. Find first space into your lizard. Move your feet on the outside of your right hand. Move back and forth or make circles. Bring your knee down. Find a little bit of space here with the knee down or knee up. If you have the space, move first your left elbow and then your right elbow. Find your lizard. Once again, get space, hug the ribs, hug the ribs. Allow the movement, the length of the pose to come from the hips and not from the lower back. That's normally what happens. We end up using the lower back for a lot of things that we don't really need it, just to find the space. Remember to hug towards the center. Use the lower back, use the strength of the lower back. From here, stay here and find your way in a funny way all the way to the back, or use your strength and bring your left, uh, your right foot to the back. Find your, your elbow. From here, we're going to change the exercise. We're going to bring the hips down, open the chest. On the exhale, we're going to move and hug towards the center. So, hips down. Hug all kind of the body towards the back side of the body. Exhale, move in, hug towards the front line. Two more times, hug towards the back. Exhale, hug towards the center. Last time, hug towards the back. Feel like your elbows are moving inward, your foot are moving kind of inward as well. So everything is moving in, your chest is moving out. Exhale, hop. Move your feet a little bit closer. Find again your dolphin pose. Really strongly push into the mat. Inhale, extend, move into your plank and back into that one facing the Beautiful, everyone. So the only thing we have to do is do the same sequence one more time, a little bit faster. That was the whole sequence? That is the whole sequence. That one we just did all of that? Yeah. And then we can? Now we're going to do the whole sequence a little bit faster, a little bit faster. And we're going to finish with Gomukhasan, okay? So ready, inhale, your left leg goes up, knee to the chest, release it in between your hands. Back knee down. Interlace the fingers into a non-dominant way, into your knee. Find length three times. So hop towards the center, release. Hop towards the center, release. Hop towards the center, stay here with hugging into the center. Keep the interlace open, open the chest up, move forward. 
Hug. Open. Move forward. Open. Yeah, like a butterfly. In. Last time. Open. In. Keep the interlacing to the hands. Stay here. Keep that sensation of hugging towards the center. Inhale, lift. Same thing. Hug towards the center, then open. Hug towards the center, open. Hug towards the center, open. Two more. Hug towards the center, open. Hug towards the center, open. Circle your arms or bring both of your arms forward. Now circle your left hand to the back. Find your twist. We're adding one pose here. So allow your left hand to move into your leg. Push deep then, or bring it to twist pose. Now circle your arms around. Woo! Find your warrior two. Circle them. Rainbow. Find your warrior two. Move into your fist fold right away. Move forward into your extended side angle. Find the space. Then back, extend the legs. Hands into the hips. Find the space. Bring the hands together or the thumbs together into the center of your back. Open the chest. Maybe walk your hands lower. Maybe all the way down into the chest. Hug. Use the lower back. Engage the lower back. Inhale. Move up. Arms or hands behind your head. Move forward. Really slowly. Really slowly. This time, if you want to go a little bit deeper, Allow your hands to go into your heels. Bend the elbows, go a little bit deeper, find the space into the back of the legs. Use the breath. We're going to go back into more stand. So, Hands, both hands down. Inhale, lift. Bend the knees, horse stances with feet. The first time around, right elbow in. Open, left elbow in. Open, right shoulder in. Open, left one. Open, right. Open, left. And release all the way down. Extend the legs. Bring your hands behind your head. Once again, rock back and forth. And use a little bit just to give the little step. Allow your right hand to stay down, open into a twist as we did on the other side. Or go for the option that I gave you before. So, hands into the opposite ankle. The other hand goes around and towards the side of the mat. Bring it forward of your body and keep the twist. You can bring the feet a little bit closer and maybe find the space. Maybe find the space to find the other leg and do the whole twist. Find the knees and this pose. I love this pose. Oh, I don't know. I imagine it's kind of put with the fashion with the Parakanasana because we have to twist into your Pashrita, into your Parakanasana. Release, really slowly, move towards the other side. So, right hand stays down, left hand goes up, or sorry, left hand goes down, right hand goes up. You can stay to this easy twist or you can have your ankle. Bring the hand forward or towards the side of the mat. Move your chest in the space created by the arms. Or maybe walk, walk your hand until you find the toes on the other side. And then go deeper into the pose. 
wherever you are. Slide. Right, here's where we're going to get a little bit comfy. So we're going to start walking towards the front as we did on the last sequence, but we're going to continue walking towards the other side until we find ourselves with the legs crossed, looking towards the other side of the wall. And we're going to see in Gomukasana. Yeah? Gomukasana. Mukau face goes. Yeah. So if your knees are not one on top of the other, like mine are, but they are a little bit separated, you can use a block or a pillow. Can you pass the block, Mokis? Okay. You can bring the block. Uh, I don't know. So you can bring a block or a pillow. Block, a pillow might be better or like a rolled mat or rolled um, uh, blanket could be better. And then just put it in between, okay? The same thing, if you don't find the space, what you could use is also the block, but on the back to lift you up a little bit, right? So we're not really moving into the hips very much today. We're moving into kind of the space, finding a little bit of space for our lower back. So what we're going to do is we're going to start twisting towards uh, our cross, our leg that is on top. So we're going to move in this case towards the front. Allow your left hand to cross forwards and do a twist. Yeah, as we did at the beginning. And as we did at the beginning, we're going to move the other hand back, your right hand back, and Open into the pose. And this pose is another pose I love. It's really good for the side legs, so you're going to feel it into your TFO, the retention of fascia latte. But it's also a great pose to really find space into your lower back. Keep the twist. Use one more breath to go deeper and exhale. Just walk the hands forward. Go a little bit forward as low as you can. Use the breath to drive you a little bit deeper. Once again, release. Bring your hands facing up. Just for about five, six breaths. And we're going to untwist the same way we twist. We kind of came to the front, yeah? So inhale, lift, extend the legs. We're going to move towards the leg that is in front. So look at the feet that is in front, move towards that feet. Then keep going around, going around, going around until you find yourself looking toward the back of the wall, yeah? Bend the elbow, bend the knees, inhale, lift up, exhale, move all the way forward and down, bend the front knee a little bit deeper in this time. Come, bring a lot of the weight forward, a lot of the weight forward, come into standing split, hug everything towards the center, feel the hugging sensation so your foot doesn't kind of flare out, but hugs in, even if it lowers down. You can go a lot higher and deeper this way. But now we're going to hug everything toward the center, even if it goes a little bit closer. The final part of the, of the sequence is bring the knee to the chest and then extend your leg toward the front. Release down, bring both legs up. Find your Navasana, both pose. Exhale, release halfway through Organavasana. Inhale up. Hi, come you can. Exhale, Organavasana. You do it in, your, in, in Taekwondo. Inhale up. Exhale, halfway down. 
Inhale up. Exhale, halfway down. Two more. Inhale up. Exhale, down. Last one. Up. Exhale, halfway down. Bring the knees to the chest. Think about moving forward. We're moving into Malasana. So inhale. Maybe come into Malasana. My knees always grab. Find the Malasana we found at the beginning. Hop towards the center. We still have the other side to do. One more. The other side of the body. Oh, the same one? Oh. Oh. The same as the right? Yes, the right side. Exhale. Extend the legs. The right side. Extend the legs. Keep the right foot forward. Bring the left foot to the back. Bring the knee down. Gabby, today is really, really, really lazy. Hug everything towards the center. Then open. Hug everything towards the center. Then open. Hug everything towards the center. And then open. Inhale, lift. Interlace your hands quickly. Hug towards the center. Open. Hug towards the center. Open. Hug towards the center. Open. Bring hands around. Uh, and behind your head, move forward and then close. Open the arms, move forward and then close. Move forward and then close. Keep a smile. And it's because I had served yesterday. Yeah, Gabby had served, so she's getting really tired. And right. Keep the arms behind, keep the hands behind your head. Tuck your toes, inhale, and lift. Find your lunch. Lunch? Mm. Gabby's not having it. If you need to have child's pose, that can be a whole class. Go and child's pose then. Find your lunge, hug towards the center, then open, hug towards the center, then open, hug towards the center, and then open. Last time, hug towards the center, and then open. Beautiful. Both hands go forward, and then, like an archer, your right hand is going to go back. Twist. Get your arrow, twist, release all the way down into an easy twist, and circle all the way around. Oh no, we missed one pose here. So keep the twist, go back into the twist, move back, find your peaceful warrior into the twist. Use for a while, and then Turn around, circle around, find your warrior two, just for a moment. Peaceful towards the back. How do you say Gabi? Vipiri Bapiri Vipiri Bhupari Varasana. Or Viparita Vidarika Vadrasana. Got me confused now, Gabi. Move forward into your extended side angle. Circle your arm forward. Find the space. And right away extend the leg. Moving into the side of the wall. Last part. Hands behind your head. Maybe change the interlacing. On the exhale, bend the knees. Move forward, find steps. We're not going to do the shoulders yet. Inhale, open. Exhale, twist. Inhale, open. Exhale, in. Inhale, open. Exhale in. Inhale open. Exhale in. One more chance to do the twist. So keep your right hand down. Open into a twist to the side. Going into the twist with your hand into your ankle. Or try to go for the full, full, full version. Of the twist, change your right side, and your left side, sorry. Bend it. Keep into the twist. Release. Change the twist to use easy twist or hand into the ankle or keep the hand into the ankle, the other hand forward. Find the space in between your arms, or maybe you keep walking the hand 
towards the other side until maybe you find your toes. Maybe you don't. It doesn't matter. If you're really a best book teacher, as I said before, if you have smiles in your face, cheese, cheese. Mm, nice looks, I love these looks. Release. Same thing as we did before, okay? So we're going to um, start moving towards the front of the mat as we were doing at the beginning of the class. But instead of you just stopping there, we're just going to keep turning around, keep turning around, keep turning around until we find our gomu hassock. This time we're going to have. <laughs> this time we're going to have our left leg on top. Okay? Yeah. So opposite leg on the front, same thing as we did before. We're going to twist. So your right arm is going to cross in front. You're going to just find a small, nice twist here. Now bring the hand into your knee, your right hand into your knee. Move your left hand to the back. And from here, find the space. Move your chest forward. But at the same time, hug the ribs towards the center. Mm. And release that. Move all the way to the front. Inhale, lift. We're going to move towards the leg, towards the foot that is in front. So look at the leg that is on top. Move towards that foot. So in this case, we're going to move towards the right side or the left foot. It gets really confusing because you're all twisted. You're moving towards the right side, yeah? That's in reality the left leg. So on twist, keep moving towards that side. You're going to find yourself untwisted into your Padottarasana, yeah? Beautiful. Now, hug all the way to the front, move towards the front of the mat. This side, back leg up, same thing as we did on the other side. We're going into standing split. And same thing, instead of going high and opening the hips, flaring up the hip, you move Lower and hug everything in. And try to find the space into the hips while hugging everything to the center and protecting your lower back. Stay here for five, four, three, two, one. Knee towards the chest, maybe come into your tippy toes. Inhale, pass the leg forward. Yeah? Into standing into one leg squat. Bring both legs up. Last time. Five cut. You can. Can you do it? Down and up or the or the Navasana? Yeah? Are we doing it, Gabby? No? Maybe? You can do it. I'm sure you can do it. Yes? Okay, we're going to encourage Gabby to do it. It's so down and up. You can do it, Gabby. Come on, down and up. Beautiful. Down. And up. That's three going. Down. And up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Bring the knees into the chest. And we're going to stay here. We'll finish the whole sequence. Okay? So last part for lower butt pain. Now we're going to go into sleepy mood. And I'm going to go through the last poses for kind of winding down and start moving to Archivasana. So one of the poses that I really can recommend for lower back pain is to kind of your wind up pose or kind of your balasana or child uh, or your happy face, happy baby, happy, happy baby, happy. Happy. Right. Happy. So different options here. The first option is just to go into your happy baby. And then what you're going to feel in the physical body that you're going to move the knees in. But what you're going to feel energetically is that you're pushing the heels up. 
and I want you to have the same sensation at the same time. It's difficult to explain. So as you move the heel, seeing what is normally going to happen, you will see is that my lower path, my sacrum goes up and my, and my pubic bone goes up. If you think energetically of pushing the heels up, then you're going to try, you're going to possibly keep the same uh, space into your happy baby, but your sacrum is going to lower. Let's observe it one more time. So, happy baby, knees to the chest, sacrum lifts up. Now push the heels up, move the sacrum down, move the lower back down, and stay here. Close the eyes. So very active, very, very active. Um, happy baby pose. We think a lot of people think that happy baby pose is just like a very unactive, not doing so anything pose, but in reality it really can be very powerful if you really focus on keeping your lower back down. Mm -hmm. So keep bringing the knees into the chest, keep pulling your heels up. Slowly start to release. Keep one knee toward the chest. Whichever you want. Maybe you're right knee if you want any advice. So right knee toward the chest. Extend the left one. This pose is again great for lower back pain. Really hug the knee toward the center and same, same sensation. So as you hug the knee, really think about hugging, bringing the knee a little bit closer towards your chest, maybe into your armpit. And at the same time, have the energetic sensation of moving your pubic bone forward and down. So your sacrum really strongly pushes into the mat. When I was having a lot of lower back pain, uh, years ago, one of my chiropractics used to do the same, but he used to do it into a, into kind of a higher surface. So he had this kind of his bed where, where we will do the exercise. But uh, if you don't, you can do it with a table and this, this is the way I normally do it. So you stand or you go into the table, imagine this is a table, bring the knee into the chest and then release the other leg. So even if you don't have kind of, if you don't want to do it into a table because maybe you think it's, it's a little bit dangerous, you have to find a really, you have to try to find a very hard solid surface to do this because you really want to think about pushing your sacrum down as you release. So we're gonna do it with Gabby, with the blocks under. No? Yeah. Yes, okay, lift yourself. And then, you're go you have to really um, have so kind of the border of the table or the border of the of the blocks is going to be used kind of on the lower side of your buttocks. Yeah? yeah. And now bring one knee to the center, can you that? Right knee. Right knee to the center. Right knee. And then extend the other leg. Don't turn around. And now imagine you're extending. You're extending kind of your, your lower back down and really moving down. Can you feel the blocks there? Which blocks? You don't feel the blocks? She doesn't feel the blocks. She's too flexible. Pull down. Change legs. Bring your left leg to the center. So same thing. Energetically, think about bringing your knee towards your armpit, towards your kind of shoulder. But um, or sorry, physically think about bringing the knee down and at the same time energetically think about elongating your spine toward the back of the mat. Does it feel nice, Gabby? No. No? No. Does it feel nice? You don't like it? No. No? no. You prefer without the block? No. No? no. Just having a no comment. <laughs> Happens a lot. So why do I have to write this on the pain? Yeah. So try to accommodate the blocks to work. Last pose, bring the knee, both knees to the chest, hug them both. And same thing, energetically think about hugging the knees towards the chest or hugging the knees maybe into the armpits. But 
at the same time elongating your spine. And easy peasy from here, you extend the legs, move into your chavasana. Gabby's favorite fall, find the part of the of the cool yoga sequence, chavasana. Yeah, sleepy time. So go into your sleepy time. We're going to we're going to check the time. Yeah, we have ten minutes. Ten fifty. So you move into your chavasana. Close your eyes, and I'm going to attempt to do a really uh, nice little job that which I learned from a dear friend and teacher. So what you're going to do is place the focus as we as last week we placed the focus into our senses. We're going to place the focus today into our lower back and into our ribs and our core. So Mina? Can you say that? No? No? Find find your cover pose. Find your chavasana. Release the legs down. And every single time you inhale, you're going to bring energy into the lower back and try to bring the lower back down. As you bring the lower back down, you're going to imagine that the ribs come in and hug towards the center. Inhale. You're allowed to open, maybe a curve comes into your spine that uses a tiny curve. So your whole uh, kind of thought process is going to be on keeping the lower back down into the mat. Inhale, push your lower back down, hug the ribs. Exhale, allow it to open, but the opening used to be a little bit. Inhale, breathe in. Exhale, allow them to open just a little bit. Last time, inhale, allow them to hug. Exhale, open. Just keep focusing in your lower back. Lower back pain is a combination of a lot of things. It's a combination of uh, lack of integration and consciousness into our body. So using a lot, using the lower back a lot just to sit down and to kind of walk, especially if we walk with heels, we, we have this beautiful kind of lower back and kind of curve into your spine, but that only kind of conflict just adds into into the issue so if you're wearing heels just think about that sensation of just hugging towards the center keep that sensation of hugging towards the center all the time if you're sitting down especially in this center we have to do so much into our laptops because we're either doing homeschooling or we're doing kind of work from home or we just spend too much time in the office into our laptop just think about hugging hugging towards the center as you hop towards the center, you will grow a little bit taller. And you will protect your lower spine. So integrate that consciousness now. Keep hopping. Hop towards the center. In this sense where you know, we cannot really hug each other, we have to keep social distance. And there is so much anger around. And so many things kind of happen at the same time. Even if we can hug other people, even if we cannot see people that mean a lot to us, we can hug them by hugging our inner selves. Slowly start to bring movement back again into your body.
Bring your right knee toward the center and toward the chest, sorry. Once again, find that sensation of lengthening. Yeah, we doesn't want to move out of Chavasana to stay there forever. Yeah. If you have your right knee towards the chest, allow the right knee to move towards the left side. Open your arms, look at the left. Please. Look at the right. And look at the left. That's really right. Look at the right side. Nice, Tabi. Yeah, or not? Yeah. Nice here. Change sides. So bring the left knee toward the chest. Extend the other leg. I'll get hug the knee first. And now the knee to go to the side. Open your arms, look towards the opposite side. Keep looking towards the left. Find the twist. Twist our other part of the kind of the poses of the asanas that help into your lower back. Allows to kind of lengthen and take kind of like a towel when we kind of bring the towel into the center and just drain out all that kind of things and water that are inside. It's the same sensation with the body. Does it feel nice, Tarita? Yes. Yes. And just allow your body to move all the way towards the right. Stay a little bit into your cuddle and in your own time, in your own pace, use the hands to move into a sitting position or stay into a cuddle. And like Gabby's gonna stay, yeah? Or you stay into the cuddle. Wherever you are, just find the space to concentrate once again into the center of your body and to the middle. For one last time, bring your hands really close towards the hips. Find the space. Bring the chin into the chest. Extend your spine. And release. Bring the hands in front of your heart. Once again, feel that hugging sensation towards the middle. Send those imaginary hugs to everyone you want to send them. We have someone close by. Bring that hugging sensation into practice, into reality. And exhale, move forward. Namaste, everyone, thank you. Have a beautiful day. Have a really beautiful day. Hope your lower back uh, releases. You can do the, I'm going to send the sequence uh, into kind of the, the comment section. So you can do it. You can do the first part, you can do the second part, you can do only the in section. Have a nice week. Uh, thank you, everyone. <laughs>